Hey guys, it's me Hunter again. Uh, I recently had a question about how to edit stock photography and I think that's a pretty simple topic. So I prepared three images and I'm just going to go through them and hopefully give you kind of an idea of how I would specifically edit for the purpose of stock photography because I had originally said that it's different than editing for artistic purposes because it is. There are some patterns that are similar across images and hopefully this quick demonstration will give you an idea of how that works. So now I'm going to pull up my screen and I'm just going to kind of explain what's going on as I edit these. And across the images, the first step I take when I'm editing for stock photography is to make sure my image is well exposed, which means to bring down the highlights, bring up the lowlights, and the second step is sharpening. But in the case of Lightroom, bringing down the low lights or bringing up the uh, low lights and bringing down the highlights is pretty easy. You can just go to the black slider here. And I know this is in German, but I'm just going to translate while I go. Uh, I, I do use my Lightroom in German. You can hold down Alt and hold the black slider. And you can normally see lines like this, which tell you that something is underexposed. And these underexposed areas could have a chance of getting your stock images rejected. As, as it stands now, you can see in the top left maybe, there is a small underexposed area. You can get rid of that pretty easily by just dragging the black slider to the right a little bit. The whites, there are some, there are some highlights that are blown out here, the fluorescence in the subway station. This photo is kind of a, it was a photo taken a long ago. Now you can see that I've taken the whites and down and the blacks up to the point where the image is now well exposed. In terms of really blown out highlights like fluorescent lights in a subway station, you're going to need to drag down the lights. Maybe it's called the highlight slider. And the white, just dragging down the whites probably won't do it. And just dragging down the whites such a significant amount might make your image look a little strange. So you can take down really, really high highlights with the lights slider or the highlight slider, whatever it says in English. Uh, reducing the noise is also pretty easy. I took this image on my main camera at 500 ISO, and I actually have profiles, pre-programmed profiles for noise reduction. But as you can see, the noise here isn't really too bad. I mean, it's a kind of a normal, slow exposure, but you could go through and you can use this small little zooming tool to see areas where there might be a lot of noise and you can normally find noise in very dark areas of a photo, like this small area, for example. And sure, you can see quite a significant amount of noise. So we're gonna just do a few tweaks that will take that noise out of there. And it, it totally depends on your camera, the performance of your camera in this area, because I'm gonna show you the next photo was taken, uh, uh, the next photo, which was taken with a much lower quality camera and you'll see that the noise is sometimes unavoidable and impossible to fix. So you can play with the noise reduction here. This camera doesn't really have any problems with uh, color noise. It's mainly just contrast noise. You might wanna, sharpening automatically happens when you open a photo in Lightroom, but you can actually mask that and that will measure the areas that have a constant color instead of edges and it will try to localize the sharpening just to those edges which can, which can sometimes be useful if it creates sort of a noise effect. This itself I think is just fine with just simple masking and noise reduction. Uh, some I, I've seen some people just play around with the color noise anyways and the the contrast noise because it doesn't seem to make too big of a difference but I not gonna risk it I guess. It, I guess that's personal preference. You got to be careful with the noise reduction when you go too far with it because it can actually soften the image too much which will get your image rejected but I'll show you how that works on the next two images. Lastly on this image when you zoom in you can clearly see that the sensor has some malfunctioning areas because this is an ISO 500 and it's a crop sensor it's kind of a small sensor. So you can use the clone stamp tool at a very, very small size to take out these points. And I actually didn't start doing this until a few months ago and my images were accepted anyways, 
but i personally just like this look because it's very clean and especially if you want to get images printed these little dots show up really really easily so you'll just go through the image and deal with those little dots it's, it can be time consuming based on your iso setting but you know it's necessary and we're being professional here lastly if i'm trying to think like a stock photography judge whatever they are called uh oh and don't let me forget chromatic aberration and profile corrections based on the lens that you're using are also necessary in this case lightroom automatically detects that this is a sigma c uh, 17 to 70 lens and corrects for the lens distortion and corrects for the chromatic aberration as well uh, although as you could see this image didn't have that bad of chromatic aberration lastly like I said, if I was thinking about, uh, if I was trying to think like a stock photography judge, I would probably straighten the image. It does seem crooked. And you can straighten the image by using these transform tools, which will actually somewhat distort the image, but you can get very perpendicular lines and that also just looks nice from a photography standpoint. And it could also still be slanted. So you might have to find sort of lines that should be straight in real life and co and compensate for those but that's just you know a quick retouch and that's image number one that i think without having set the saturation changed the dynamic changed the contrast changed any of the things that i maybe would have changed regarding the colors which i probably would have or the Dunst and Fanon, I'm, I'm not really sure what that what that's called. It's like fog removal. It kind of strengthens the colors and the contrast at the same time. Some vignetting, maybe. All of those are not being affected right now, just because I'm simply showing you the specifically stock, the, the, the particularly important adjustments for stock photography. And those would be highlights, lowlights, noise reduction, profile corrections, and for this image, uh, dimension transformations, which make a more perpendicular image. The third image I'm gonna go straight to, this was taken with a compact point and shoot, which will be part of an experiment that I am going to document in the upcoming week, actually. Uh, really excited about that, so make sure to stay subscribed to the channel. I, so I took this image, I took this long exposure with a point and shoot camera and I don't, this is, this is at ISO 80 and it has this much noise, which is pretty amazing. Like I did with the last image, you would check your low lights. You have some underexposed areas, bring those back up. You have some highlights, bring those down. Uh, and that looks fine. No other adjustments. It doesn't actually look fine, but maybe to a stock photography robot, it looks fine. Uh, chromatic aberration profile corrections don't forget for this you might need in the noise reduction area this camera has a lot of color noise so you would get rid of that the masking might be kind of heavy because the sharpening tool is just not really usable here and the actual contrast noise reduction bring it up to maybe 30 or so and that looks fine that looks like it would be actually usable on a stock website. And you can particularly, particularly tell where there's noise in the areas where the colors stay consistent and, and not necessarily just the edges. But the noise that was previously present in this sort of rim of the lens is now gone, as you can see. And the lines are still sharp, and that's fine. For this image, those are the adjustments that I would make. Just noise reduction, uh, at low lights, highlights, profile corrections, and chromatic aberration. Um, but once again, I'm not making the actual artistic corrections that I would make. I would maybe change the colors, contrast definitely. You can see this red up here is just wrong. So the white balance is clearly off. But those are not necessary for what I am trying to demonstrate. And remember that stock photography is also about having nice looking images. You can't just technically correct this image and submit it. You need to have an image that pleases your eye and pleases what you think other people would think about the image. 
lastly, i would like to show you an image where it might actually be impossible to fix and this is this was taken with that same camera on iso four hundred and you can see this the noise performance on on this camera is just really bad and it's it's a really cheap camera but that's why it's an experimental thing that i'm doing you would go through the low lights try to bring those up the, the dynamic range on your camera also plays a role here the dynamic range of this camera is pretty terrible your highlights let's see uh no there are none uh, we actually didn't have any of the whites breaking out of the of the range until we actually increase the whites so you can actually lower you can crush your blacks and raise your highlights to increase the dynamic range of your image or increase the contrast of your image and it does actually make it look more pleasing and i think it portrays the whites and blacks more accurately on other displays and not necessarily just how you think it looks nice on your display otherwise with this image definitely need noise reduction chromatic aberration profile corrections are all fine you can see by the vignetting here on the bottom corners that this might be a little too wide of a focal range but i would not upload this image to stock photography it's not interesting enough and it's technically bad even if we increase the color reduction all the way you can still see there's an incredible amount of contrast noise we would need to bring the sharpening the automatic sharpening all the way down still lots of noise we would need to bring the noise the contrast noise reduction at 50 it's still not re even really usable i mean you really need to make sure that your images are are tack sharp if you want to submit them to stock photography websites and just in the flat surfaces here with with one color you can just see too much noise if you got this accepted i would be pretty surprised and if we went up to a contrast noise reduction of 70 we start to actually lose the details of the image and you can play with whatever sliders you want you can start to take the details out you can increase the smoothness and even when you start to see improvement in the noise reduction we are really losing our edges of the image and it's just it unfortunately is not usable for stock photography and this can happen if you don't really know what you're what you're doing but those are those are three images that i think give you a good idea of how i kind of have an my, my approach to editing stock photography and yeah i hope that kind of helps you out otherwise i think when you export them don't add any sharpening uh, lightroom on export will offer an, an extra level of sharpening which you don't need because you also don't know what these stock images what these stock images will be used for companies could be printing these and you don't want to sharpen them for a display if they're going to be printed so just don't worry about that of course you want to add your metadata you want to go through your keywording and uh, all of that stuff that doesn't really deal with the image itself but rather the metadata and that's that's pretty much it make sure make sure your quality slider is all the way up the file sizes aren't limited my uh, picture resolution is 300 pixels per inch and that's uh, that's pretty much it if you have any more questions feel free to ask them and if you really like this video and are considering getting started in stock photography yourself please consider using my referrals which i will link in the description below and uh, yeah good luck with your stock images